This is my Neoden YY1 pick and place machine. Uh, I have ran this thing uh, pretty hard for the last uh, couple of weeks. And um, once I had worked through some issues, which I will get into a little bit, uh, some of the things I like and dislike about this machine, I ran about 40 of these through it. Um, these are my BS3 ESP32 boards that I make. There's 10 a panel, and I made about 40 of them. Uh, so yeah, I will cut to a little sizzle reel of it running, uh, so you can see what that looks like, and then after that's over, uh, I'll talk about the things that I like and dislike about this machine. So, what do I like and dislike about this machine? Um, for the most part, I'm actually pretty happy with it, but there are a few little things that are kind of annoying about it. So I will get into that. The biggest point of pain that I can think of is uh, this tape film peeling mechanism. While it does work uh, usually pretty well, um, it is extremely finicky and basically in each of these little idler wheels there's a little friction ring and if that friction um, isn't set just right for some of these then it can cause issues because what happens is is that it'll come down and it'll pull the tape forward which will break the tension on the tape uh, the film up top which will allow this to pull it but the whole thing rotates so as long as the tension is set correctly it won't pull any of these others farther forward if that makes sense it works but it is kind of a little finicky i didn't have really any issues with the paper tape ones the black plastic uh, tape i had one of them was a little finicky but it would occasionally keep shifting forward or uh, the tape wouldn't peel back far enough and then the head would come down on the top of the tape so i had to adjust some of the friction rings in those Outside of that, um, it works fairly reliably on those. The only other issue is if you have tape that has a sticky film on it, like this one is, you know, sticky, what happens is that it, it will get stuck to the top idler wheel and then get sucked up in there and get wrapped up in all that fun stuff. This one actually goes here. What I've done is gone through and 3D printed Design a 3D printed some like covers for the top wheel to try and see if I get that to focus. Try and get it to uh, uh, stop it from sticking to the top wheel, but it, it but it still sticks to the top wheel and it gets sucked up e even underneath this little cover. So at this point, I don't really know what to do about that. So how do I you know solve that when it's running? Well, I literally have to stand here when it gets to that component and you know hold and pull this down taut so it doesn't get um, sucked up into the wheel while it runs that component. That only happens on that one and my uh, battery connectors that do the same thing over here. Um, my USB connectors, it's kind of a sticky film but it's big enough that it doesn't really stick very well to the uh, to the roller so it's not a big deal. So I really only have to deal with it for two components. Um, Let's see, what else is there can talk about? Uh, the, the way they f pick or find your, um, I don't have this one set up for that one, but basically uh, the way it finds this board is it uses one fiducial in one component, which is kind of weird. Like um, the software does not support using more than one fiducial. 
So you have to, it'll come over and you can select which component you want to align off of, and then you have to, you can select a, a fiducial, or you can, I think you can probably just use two components if you don't have, um, if you don't have an actual fiducial, fiducial. But uh, it does work, um, but it is a little weird that they don't support more than one fiducial. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, one issue I had was after I would do a run, if I wanted to start the next run, and you come down here, and if I hit, you know, start, it would throw a Z motor um, error, and I'd have to reboot the machine. Rebooting this machine is kind of a pain in the butt because when it reboots, it rehomes, which you wouldn't think would be a big issue, but this machine does not use uh, z limit switches. So it literally just comes up against the side until it can't go any farther, and then it's like, okay, I've hit that limit, and then it does in both directions. Well, how that works, it's not 100% accurate, so sometimes after a reboot, all of my positions on all my little pickups would be slightly off, so I'd have to go through and readjust them. And you can imagine how annoying that would be, is after every 10 minutes, like I do a panel, and then I go to start another one, I have to shut it off, rehome it, pick all that stuff up again. But what ended up being the issue was, and it was kind of my fault anyways, is that if your place and pick heights for your components is not set perfectly, or not perfectly, but um, good enough, it, it can make, um, when it uh, puts the part down, it can make the Z motor skip a step, which it'll still finish the run, oddly enough, but when it goes to start the next run, it'll be like, hey, it's, you know, the Z motor is not where it should be, I need to restart, basically. I think the biggest issue was my battery connector. It's, you know, it's a taller component, and so maybe when it was coming down, it was coming down a little too hard and making the motor skip a step. Once I fixed that and had the, those heights set correctly, which you can do in the parameters, um, then it worked fine. And then I could run a panel, and as soon as it was done, put, an, put another panel in there, hit start, and it would start again. So, uh, yeah, that was. So once I figured that out, that, that saved me a ton of time. Um, trying to think of anything else. It comes with one of these. For bigger uh, reels, uh, I either need to order some more or just make something. But in the meantime, I literally was just kind of setting these big ones down on the side here. And when it got shorter, I would just rotate a little bit and that worked fine enough. Um, so, yeah. Software is pretty intuitive. Nothing really to complain about there. So, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Once you work out your quirks, and again, the biggest issue you're going to run into is. Um, the, the tape peeling mechanism. Since it is friction based, and they do give you a couple packs of like extra friction rings that you can mix and you know, match um, to get the different friction levels right and, and obviously to replace them. I don't know how long they are going to last before they start to wear out since it is friction based. Um, I haven't had an issue yet, but you know, I don't know if it's like six months, if you do, if you run boards continuously for six months, if it wears out or if it's like two months or two years, I, don't, I have no idea at this point, but that's something to take into consideration. They're small enough that I'd imagine just buying, you know, replacement packs um, shouldn't be too big of a deal as long as they still support those. It might be one of those things where it might be worth just buying a bunch ahead of time. <laughs> um, so you have them in the future if they stop supporting this machine down the road. So, just something to think about. Um, I thought I took a video when this thing arrived. Apparently I didn't or I lost the footage, but it comes in a big wooden crate. It was pretty well packaged, although I did have one issue in which this motor back here was bent, and the, or the metal bracket that holds it was bent up. I don't know, I have no idea how it managed to do that because the pack, or the crate itself and the packaging, nothing showed that it was damaged, but that was bent up. I was able to bend it back with a vise and it ended up working fine, but Neodin did send a replacement. In fact, this was the one that was bent. So I got it pretty straight, and it worked fine enough. But they sent me a replacement bracket and a new motor, just in case the motor was damaged. Which it wasn't, but it was, I appreciate them doing that at least. So I swapped them out once the new one arrived. Both of them worked fine, but it's still kind of annoying. You get this machine and you want to use it, and then the, you know, the, if you don't have some way to bend that bracket back, it was kind of, I see that would be a pain in the butt for some people. Anyways, um, yeah, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this machine. I'll try and answer them. I try to cover what I could. Um, like I said, overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, with the machine. Um, 
one thing I'll point out uh, is how many components an hour can actually do. Um, so these, this is a panel that has 10 BS3 boards on it. Um, there's 21 components on each board, so 210 components for a panel. I could do 10 by hand in about an hour, maybe 12 in an hour, 15 if things are really flying. With a machine I can do one of those in almost exactly 10 minutes. So that works out to about 1,200 components an hour, 12, I forget the exact number, 1,250 or something like that. Um, the machine, they rated for, you know, I think like 2,500 or 3,000 components an hour. What it means when they say that is it's literally picking up a component closest to the camera and just going back and forth as fast as possible. You can hit about that number. Um, the 1,200 components I'm getting an hour is using you know this side of the machine, using this side of the machine, and doing a tool change in between. So it's a little more real world. But I'd imagine if you were just picking up stuff on this side and using both heads to double pick stuff, you could probably get close to 2,000 components an hour, I bet. Um, and I'm running the machine at the default 70% speed, so um, they, they suggest not going much higher than that, but it machine is technically capable of going faster. But it's something to keep in mind. So yeah, in any case, I'm I am pretty happy with it. Like I said, it took a good you know week or two to kind of work out all the kinks and get it to a point where it was where I could just hit start and it would run and I could pretty much just let it run other than having to come over here and pull down the sticky tape when it got to that component. But when it was doing everything else, I could pretty much just let it go. You know, I wouldn't I didn't have to necessarily stand over it. I could get the next panel prepped or you know pull one out of the uh, uh, reflow oven or whatever so in any case thanks for watching like I said if you have any questions about this machine leave a comment below um, and if you have any good ideas on how to stop this tape from sticking to the top wheel I greatly appreciate that because this is what I've tried and it's not worked like how I was hoping it would and that's the best solution I could think of so all right thanks for watching guys bye